Shrubs are the backbone of any garden, but we've rather forgotten about them over the last few years because, of course, we've all fallen in love with the perennials that have the beautiful flowers and obviously they're so wildlife friendly. But actually perennials compared to shrubs are quite a lot of work. So if you want a low maintenance garden that's also got beautiful flowers, wildlife friendly and something to look at in the winter, then really it's time to look at the structure of shrubs again. A shrub is a woody plant whose structure stays above the ground all year round. It's usually not as big as a tree and it may lose its leaves in winter, in which case it's called deciduous, or it may stay green all year round, in which case it's called evergreen. So I've picked out three of my favourite shrubs and I've asked other experts to pick out their favourite shrubs too. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap subscribe. My first choice is Physocarpus, otherwise known as nine bark. And this one in particular is called Lady in Red and it's got these lovely dark leaves and then it's got very pretty pink flowers. One thing that perhaps puts people off shrubs is that you don't get kind of the instant impact sometimes that you get with perennials. And I planted this about 18 months ago and although I enjoyed the leaves, it didn't really do very much in my garden last year, but this year it's thrown out these lovely pink flowers and they've been going for several weeks. And it needs very little care. You just simply prune it immediately after flowering so that you get the best flowers next year or you can prune it really quite vigorously in winter. In fact, if you accidentally cut it down completely, it'll bounce back. So it's a very accommodating plant. It's got an RHS Award of Garden Merit, which is given to exceptional plants. And in fact, my second shrub I discovered also has an RHS Award of Garden Merit. And that is Sambucus nigra, black lace. Sambucus nigra is the common elder, but this one, black lace, has got these lovely fine dark filigree leaves and very, very pretty flowers again, once again in late spring, early summer. This is a shrub that does best in sunny positions, but actually it's been very happy in this east facing wall in my garden, which is partially shady. And it seems to be completely happy with almost complete neglect. I forgot to prune it for years and it then got a bit big, it's, it's actually bigger than I am now, but we pruned it back really hard, it bounced back hard, it can take quite rough treatment. And it's not invasive in the UK and North and Europe, but you might have to check if you're in other parts of the world. Now let's head down to my neighbour Jane Beadle, who's a garden designer as well as being a cookery influencer. She was a finalist in the Great British Bake Off and she's got a couple of shrubs that she really loves, so let's find out what those are. When I'm putting things together, I place my shrubs first before I put any of my perennials in, because that way you know that the garden's going to look good all year round. Nandin Domestica has many cultivars and I have got a couple in my garden, one of which is called either Obsessed or Obsession. You'll see both names around there. And the gorgeous thing about it is it has the most wonderful deep magenta fresh growth, which positively glows in the spring and the summer. And of course, it's there all year round. It's, it fades to a darker green, but it gives you a really good bit of structure. I use it as part of a screen between two small areas of my garden. And if I'm really lucky, I'll get some very pretty panicles of white flowers on it, which then produce brilliant red berries in in the winter that, and last all the way through to the following spring. Um, another cultivar of Nandina that I really love is a relatively new one called Nandina Lemon and Lime. It's a slightly smaller cultivar, but it has the most brilliant, as you could probably imagine, lemony, limey leaves. But it really brightens up uh, a sort of shady spot in the garden. It doesn't need full sun, despite what other people will tell you. I have got it in a couple of places and it just seems to thrive wherever it is. Euonymus alatus compactus, I just love saying those three words, it sounds so you know what you're talking about, um, is a brilliant, brilliant euonymus. It's deciduous, unlike many, and it has some very sort of corky bark, which looks stunning even in the winter. The foliage is really pretty, I like it. Um, almost nondescript flowers, but you don't really grow it for that at all. What you do grow it for is it's absolutely stunning 
stunning autumn foliage. It goes almost day glow pink in the right position. It's a brilliant shrub. You can keep it pruned down to fit whatever space. I've got a tiny garden and I've got two of them in my garden. I love them so much. They're just a real treat and also as cheap as chips to buy. And now over to fellow YouTuber Niall of Niall Gardens. He's based in Ireland and he vlogs and how to's about ornamental plants and vegetables. And his YouTube channel's quite new, but it's fast growing. So do go and check it out. Hi everyone. One of the best shrubs for your garden has to be this, Mahonia. I've sung its praises before over on my own channel, Niall Gardens, because it really is a plant that has truly won me over. Mahonias are originally from North America, Central America and Asia, so they are properly frost hardy and frost resistant, down to about minus 15 degrees Celsius, which is about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. They're not too choosy when it comes to the soils that they grow in, the light levels they need or their aspect, but they do like just that little bit of shelter because they don't like the harshness of being hit by cold winds. One of the most distinctive parts of a Mahonia are the leaves. As you can see, they're really strong, thick, waxy and spiny. And particularly, this looks great at the back of a border. But I promised you more than just a big green blob of a shrub. And that's where Mahonia's flowers and berries come in. Most Mahonias like this one have bright, acid yellow flowers, though you can find other ones with more warmer tones and oranges. They flower in the autumn and into the winter. That strong yellow really does shine out during the winter when, let's face it, colour can be somewhat limited. Then, once the flowers pass, they're replaced by berries that are a really gorgeous purpley black colour. The Mahonia that I have this one is called Winter Sun. It's probably the most commonly available and it can grow as large as about three to five meters in height, which this is, and about three to four meters in spread. But don't worry, there's loads of choice. You can buy big ones, small ones, and even creeping ones. Looks aside, what I love about Mahonia is just how easy it is to maintain. You can grow it into something really large like this, essentially a small tree or you can keep it exactly the size and form that you want. And doing that really is so simple. It can be easily controlled through pruning and it will take a very severe pruning without having any problems. Sarah Langton Lockton is formerly the gardening editor of The Lady magazine here in the UK. She has opened her garden for both the National Garden Scheme and for our local Faversham Open Gardens. And she's met many years as a volunteer at the Garden Museum in London. So she knows a huge amount about plants and gardens and she's a great believer in shrubs. So I'm going to ask her for her best recommendation. Well, I'm an unrepentant devotee of the mixed border, although some people assert that the shrub in the border has had its day, but I think they're a vital ingredient. They add interest at different heights and they make for a harmonious and interesting and lovely border and with, that is of interest for a long period of the year, particularly if you have evergreen shrubs. And among my favourite evergreen shrubs are the viburnums, which are also some of those are, are deciduous. My favourites, uh, there are three of, the, of these, and in particular, Viburnum Picatum F. Tomentosum Watanabe, which is quite a name for the smallest of these three. This is a wonderful, quite compact packed plant. It won't get, grow much bigger than five or six feet. It flowers in late spring and then sporadically all through the summer. It will thrive in full sun or partial shade and it can be pruned quite hard back if it gets a bit too big for its spot. Posy Gentles is a garden designer and her own garden is a wonderfully sort of romantic and pretty place. She's open for the National Garden Scheme here in Britain and also for Faversham Open Gardens, our own local garden scheme. I think shrubs have been very neglected over the past few years. Perennials have been hogging all the glamour with designers like P. Tudolf creating this marvellous meadow effect but they're not always the best thing 
for a smaller garden or a middle-sized garden. Shrubs can play a really vital role here. They provide winter interest in some cases and they also can give you flowers early in the year at eye level or thigh level when bulbs are coming up and perennials are still struggling out of the ground. Practically, once established, they are less susceptible to drought or frost and they don't need much looking after, but they do need, in many cases, pruning. The two shrubs I've chosen to talk about today, which are not my favourites, but I've chosen them because I think they provide softness in the garden and blurring of the edges, which is very important. I think people look at shrubs and want an architectural style, but actually those shrubs which don't have a particular shape are important too. So I've chosen two shrubs, which you may well see in old abandoned gardens because they struggle on, they're real survivors, and I think this has given them a bad name. So I've chosen Choisia tenata, which has a glossy, green leaf, a light green leaf, so it looks shiny and light in the winter rather than, you know, dark, like a bay. Um, it flowers twice a year with little white flowers. It will grow in shade, quite deep shade under laurels even, although you may sacrifice some of the flowers then. It needs very little pruning except to keep it to the size and place you want it to be. The other shrub I've chosen is Wygella um, Florida variegata, which has a lovely matte variegated leaf, not like the glossy variegated leaves of Euonymus, and a pale pink flower. It's very pretty in late spring or early summer because it's very important with Wygella that you prune it properly. I can't stress this enough because it is deciduous and in the winter the leaves will fall off and you will see the disaster of the pruning if you've done it wrong. So after flowering, reach into the plant and cut older wood right down to the bottom and that will allow space and impetus for the new shoots to come up and you will keep a lovely open frondy plant. Whatever you do, don't cut it all the way around the outside like you're pruning a box ball because that will be complete disaster. I also thought it would be interesting to ask a company that sells plants what shrubs people have been particularly asking for. So I asked plant and seed suppliers Thompson and Morgan whether there was any shrubs that really seemed to be unexpectedly popular at the moment. And the shrub they came up with is actually one of my favourites. It's Fatsia japonica spider's web. And Fatsia japonica is just such a brilliant shrub because it grows very well in the shade. It's got these incredible sculptural leaves. It's really pretty hardy. And it just really will put up with endless neglect. And then it has flowers in the winter, just at the very end of autumn, beginning of winter, when the pollinators that are still up are really needing flowers. Jane Moore is the author of Planting for Butterflies, Planting for Wildlife and Planting for Birds. And she's also the head gardener of the Bath Priory Hotel. So I asked her to tell us what we should be looking for when you're choosing shrubs that will be particularly good to support your bird populations. There are so many brilliant shrubs that are great for birds, but all shrubs are good for birds. The obvious ones are things with berries, you know, things like cotoneaster and ones with lots and lots of fruits. And they are the really easy choices to put in your garden because we quite enjoy seeing the fruits as well. But there's also lots of thickety shrubs that birds will really enjoy. So things like hedges and um, densely growing shrubs and a lot of the summer flowers like Philadelphus, mock orange, and, and even things like Wygelia, birds will really enjoy hopping about. They feel really safe in those shrubby thickets, and so they'll hop about from, from shrub to shrub, using that shelter to keep them away from any nasty predators that might be lurking about. But there's also lots of very ornamental shrubs that are brilliant for us in our gardens. Things like Cotinus are great for birds too because they're really quite big growers and lots of the um, flower heads and seed heads will really appeal to lots of smaller birds and also just really common or garden shrubs things like roses are fantastic for lots of birds not only will small birds like blue tits feed off the aphids which uh, we all know roses get 
but the larger birds will also use things like the rose hips later on in the season. One of my favourite roses for a slightly more sort of natural garden, but that's also extremely colourful, is Rosa Glauca, which I think is really pretty. It has these lovely little pink flowers, this beautiful bluey foliage, and then later on some really attractive rose hips. So I'll put a link to uh, everything you need to know about growing roses at the end of this video. And let me know what your favourite shrubs are. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.